There has been fresh violence in Manipur in the last 24 hours. A police sub-inspector has been shot dead in Chura Chandpur. I'm Bark Haddad, you with the Mojo story. Our special focus on the situation in Manipur continues. The crisis has now entered its fifth month. And despite the prolonged duration, the prolonged time frame that we're speaking about, a solution, a path for peace is still not in sight. Sporadic incidents of violence are not uncommon. But perhaps what is most worrying is the unprecedented way in which the army is being targeted and the Assam rifles has been vilified in certain quarters. In fact, in the last few months, the army has taken the unusual step of issuing two public statements objecting to the way in which it is being targeted and reminding people that it operates without any fear or favor. Yet we have seen in the last couple of days, several prominent Maiti groups come together and lash out against the Assam rifles, which of course operate directly under the army and has in fact asked for action against the Assam rifles, warning in its statement, if the government doesn't act, we will. All of this is unfolding in a situation where there have been clashes between uniform versus uniform between the Manipur police and the army soldiers. And in other instances, you had female protesters actually blockading highways and not allowing soldiers to pass through till they furnish their identity cards. Even as the country mourns the loss of soldiers and a police officer in Kashmir, it is time to pay urgent attention to what is happening, the targeting and vilification of the army on the ground in Manipur. This story needs our attention. And I'm privileged to introduce today our newsmaker on the program, Lieutenant General Sukhdeep Sangwan. General Sangwan has been, of course, the DG of the Istan Rifles. He's a senior military veteran with special expertise in the Northeast. And he's now, of course, also a visiting speaker at the Indian Institute of Management. General Sangwan, it is a pleasure to have you with us. I wish it were in happier circumstances. As someone who has headed the Assam Rifles, uh, how do you feel today? Do you feel saddened? Do you feel angry? Do you feel pained? Do you feel worried at the way the Assam Rifles is being openly targeted? Legislators are asking for it to be withdrawn. Uh, there are certain groups, ethnic groups that are accusing it of bias. In all my years, I've never quite seen uh, the army, and remember the Rif Assam Rifles does operate under direct operational control of the army, targeted in this manner. How do you feel, General Sangwan, about the situation? Baka, firstly, at the outset, uh, let it be, let me thank you. It's customary for calling me over on a show which is anchored by you, somebody who thank we you. had revered as an excellent you, uh, anchor as well as a journalist. Now, thank coming, you, to Mani coming to Manipur, uh, why only Assam Rifles and Army? I would say somebody like me who has spent most part of his career and life in Northeast, it is painful to see the whole of Northeast and particularly Manipur burning for the last four and a half, five months. You see, we have it's time to carefully tread for all of us into this tangled situation of Manipur. Manipur, unfortunately, today also in the rest of the country is being seen through the prism of insurgency. Uh, I would like to urge people to forget Manipur has traveled miles and miles away from insurgency. They have actually now gone into the traditional richness of the Northeast culture. That is what Manipur is. And we need to now see that while army and the Assam rifles, they have been roped in into various controversies, which is unfortunate, highly unfortunate, I would say. But we have to arrive at a situation wherein these kind of institutions why only army and this thing, even police and all, we have to leave them away to take their decisions and carry out the operations the way they are mandated to do and not bring out into the open media. As we go through the discussion, I'll tell you a few more examples. But what we need to understand is any decision wherein you want to bring in the army or the Assam rifles into a kind of a controversy, you have to understand what was the level at which a decision has been taken. What was the intent for the decision to have been taken? We have to see that. And finally, what is the outcome? So once you see all these things, then you will be able to understand that certain things could have been left to the hierarchy rather than bringing into the public domain. So that is the sad part, I would say. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, in I, I think the very important point, General Sangwan, that you make is that this is not an insurgency. This is a clash between two communities, neither of which is questioning their affiliation, their loyalty to the Indian Union, because of which the army 
cannot use force. It, it by definition ties the hands of tyranny, and I think a lot of people don't understand this. No, it's absolutely right because as of now, I would say the situation is plain and simple law and order situation, which is capable of being handled by the police at best by the CAPS and paramilitary force, and that is a Sam rifles. A Sam rifle is given the hands, free hands, to operate there. They'll be able to handle it, but. Sorry for saying, and you are a media man, media person. Uh, we have to now draw lines. Media has to draw those lines that beyond this, certain things should not be coming in the open domain. Leave it to the army and leave it to the government, whether it is state government or central government. There is MHA, there is MOD, there is a state government, and there is a defense ministry in MOD, MHA. They will take decisions. So unfortunately, the moment something happens, the media pounces and starts narrating those incidents in a manner as if heavens have fallen. Northeast has seen worst times. Northeast has come out of all that now. And this is situation in Manipur. I am a firm believer, knowing the Northeast society, knowing Manipur, knowing Methis, Nagas, Cookies, they are able to come to conclusions, sitting together and finding solutions. We have to take them along rather than just yeah. publicize every small incident. You know, I, I take no offense at what you say about the media. I actually agree with you that I think uh, in a situation like this, certain things need to be need to be handled behind closed doors. But we have a very unusual situation here. We've had a statement from uh, the Kokomi groups, which is an umbrella coalition of, of the Maiti groups, basically saying, lashing out at the Assam rifles, accusing it of being in cahoots with the Editor's Guild report, which they disagree with, which they call kooky propaganda, and ending by saying, if the government doesn't act, we will. We've had legislators, you know, MLAs, uh, whom, the, whom the same security forces have, have protected, uh, saying, inko replace karo. Now, imagine the morale of a soldier today, sir. I mean, you, you've served there, you've commanded the rifles. What do you think the soldiers are going through today? No, it's highly detrimental for the morale of the entire, not only soldiers, every rank and file, right from officers down to the youngest, junior most rank in the soldiery. The unfortunate part is, I told you, look at the person who is taking a decision and look at the force which is operating, a force which is being called as sentinels of the Northeast, friends of the Northeast, who have devoted two centuries of their devotion in the Northeast. Come COVID, come disaster. Come anything, you talk of world wars, you talk of 1962 war, Assam rifles have walked shoulder to shoulder with Northeast. They, they cannot, they have people from Naga community, they have people from Kuki community, they have people from Maithis, they have people from all kind of community. And they live together, they operate there, they can't survive within the unit if they have this kind of animosity. So to say that some of the MLAs, and I'm sorry, I'm commenting on the political hierarchy of the country. Today, how can you have the MLAs signing about a particular force and wanting them to be withdrawn. This is precisely what I was mentioning. This could have been a confidential letter to the ministry. And in the garb of some operational requirement and operational tinge being given to this, the units could have been moved out in the national interest if somebody wanted that, without telling the Javans or soldiers or the public that this is the reason they have gone out. So this is doable. Unfortunately, I would go a step further and I would dare to take that cause. Where is that accountability, Barkha? If these are the people who have signed a letter against the Indian Army or the Assam Rifles, these are also the representatives of the locals. Why could not they sense the pulse of the locals when this was brewing? Why couldn't they come ahead and say Ki, this is the likelihood of a kind of an outrage that will come up? They should be the first ones to have uh, informed the, uh, the, the politicians and the government. Unfortunately, that has not happened. You know, in fact, uh, I won't name him, but I was speaking with another senior army officer and he said he was so angry when he saw this statement, uh, by General Sangwan, by uh, the, the legislators. He said, Some of, we have protected the lives of these very lawmakers today who are criticizing us. Even when this started, the amount of number of people who were saved by Assam rifles, safe corridors were provided to either of the communities. There was no bias anywhere by any of the forces, Assam Rifles or uh, Army, anywhere. And yet, if this kind of an allegation comes, that means there's something more which is driving this kind of allegation. It is not pure, simple uh, kind of a episode-related reporting. There's something more which, which has to be seen and which definitely is not in the interest uh, in the national interest because it is not only within the borders. These kind of things and planted news are from across the borders. 
who better than i mean people who have served there in the northeast would understand that our adversaries are waiting to pounce at such opportunities and we are giving them this on the platter I, I i fully agree with you i've been saying every day that this is a very dangerous turn the things have taken in manipur with the army being dragged into these controversies now i want to pick up two things that are specifically happening uh, i was on the ground in manipur and i saw women blocking the path pathways of the army of army convoys in one case as you know the army actually had to release 12 militants because they didn't want to face off against these female protesters at the other end of the spectrum in one area the army was welcomed the police was not now i'm going to play out for you general sangwan a video an unfortunate video where you actually have two of the uniformed uh, entities clashing with each other this video is viral like you said it should not be in the public domain but everything is happening khulke in the public domain so just let's listen in and then i'll get your comments uh, this is a confrontation of uniform versus uniform ambulance mein chhe karne ke liye kya fayda hai एम्बुलेंस में चेक करने के लिए क्या फायदा है सर नहीं बोलना एम्बुलेंस में चेक करने के लिए क्या फायदा है ये एम्बुलेंस था एम्बुलेंस है एम्बुलेंस में चेक करने के so that small 9 second clip really captures one of the flash points that there is now open collision in another instance you had armed civilians wearing police commandos how does the army how do the rifles handle how do the assam rifles handle a situation like this so because this is the most unfortunate i would say because these are the two forces which have to operate hand in glove with each other and they have done it in the past they have been doing it earlier and as recent about 3 4 years back also there was intelligence sharing between these two forces but we have to understand who is stoking this fire it is not from within the police alone i keep saying it is from across the borders and certain vested interests from within the country we got to identify those people and not target the police as a full force or assam rifles as a full force the manipur police is equally devoted the manipur police also delivers the results which are expected of them it is only those few people who have to be held accountable who have to be taken to task otherwise how how do you justify today it is assam rifles versus police few years back it was police versus police one state police versus another state police i mean this is never heard in a democratic country like this that our inter intra police clashes inter police inter state police clashes are happening this has to be arrested this tendency is very dangerous and this is due for assam rifles because we are i mean these people are operating they belong to those areas 40% of the force is from that area this can still be tackled they will again develop good relations with manipur police but those few people who did not act when these kind of things happened they need to be booked first so those are the issues which we can yeah when when a, when a soldier is stopped by a protester and and you know you must have seen this video and she tells him you show your identity card you prove which ethnicity you belong to how does the soldier this is the video we have many videos like this this is one such video the soldier in this video very politely is telling her ma'am don't do this very politely maintaining his 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 calm his composure in the, in the face of extreme provocation but this is dangerous for national security we cannot be having women protesters at the front line which automatically ensures that even it, uh, the soldier will think twice of even using a tear gas shell or anything now how does a soldier how does an indian army soldier how does an assam rifle soldier handle this situation see but can allow me 30 seconds firstly so that the viewers know what mira pai bees are and who are these people why this has happened a very good movement which started basically against the i mean certain societal norms were being violated they came and rose against them and it was in 1977 they came in very noble cause any human right violation and those kind of things and then this fire was stoked initially against the afspa when people thought that this can be a good tool to push in their agenda and from then on this has become a kind of a, a weapon or a tool with the people who got subversive designs now as far as this incident is concerned i would admire and appreciate the efforts of this soldier and the training which has been imparted 
see you're not supposed to be insulting our ladies and women they have also been you see there's somebody back who is pushing them so he has acted very maturely and i would compliment the unit and the ceo as well as the jawan but this is detrimental to the overall functioning and the morale of the indian army and the assam rifles or even police women have got no right to ask this kind of thing they are not authorized to do this kind of an activity they they could have raised some slogans and prevented them police could have come so i would still appreciate and i would still say the indian army and the assam rifles should continue to exercise restraint and let this be handled by the police wherever such kind of things happen now you have spoken about how the meera paibis were a powerful women's movement first against drugs then the afspa debate now currently uh, the one time that the army might argue we need afspa uh, you you do not have afspa across manipur right the army is operating with one hand tied behind its back we've not seen any forward movement on either even bringing in ordinance since parliament is not in session parliament is going to have a special session in a few days from now would you like to see i mean how important is afspa cover right now given the kind of vilification that is taking place of the army and the assam rifles i would give you a very uh, different uh, view of mine which i have been propagating otherwise in my various circles on hate act See, on one side, we are talking of act east. On one side, we are wanting to become as a regional power first, and then we are aspiring to become a global power. And on the other side, we are saying our this region, which is the pivot and anchor for our act east, is unstable. The moment you authorize army to come in and give arms power, or you call in an army here, that means the situation is not conducive for any kind of developmental activities or international activities. Here is a situation where you have an army-like force, which is Assam Rifles, empower them. raise those additional battalions which were to be raised let those battalions be deployed there should there be something required pump in more capfs but keep the indian army away because this precisely is the design of china that they want indian army to be sucked in northeast indian army has got a greater design to look arunachal words northwards they should look on the northern borders and don't get cowed down and sucked into this kind of a thing this is this is manageable within the resources of the home ministry itself so why are we honestly getting into the defense ministry and invoking afspa and then the second thing will be afspa will give another tool for those kind of protests the locals all communities and the women also that's a so you, that's a very that's a very in, very interesting perspective because general sangwan basically what you're saying is leave it to the paramilitaries the capfs to handle the the, the situation do not bring the army the army's job is not to maintain law and order the army should be at the border not not within the state to handle this internal turmoil am i correct in understanding your 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 perspective absolutely right but absolutely right well, let me ask you in the end you're an expert on the northeast you have hands on experience in the northeast what is the way forward sir one thing we haven't spoken about is weapons uh, in civilian control in the time that we were in in the northeast we met uh, paddy farmers rice farmers they all had guns we also met uh, young boys who sh- who are school going and college going age who also had guns there was talk of handcrafting guns there was there there are mortars in circulation uh, there are uh, rocket uh, launchers in circulation we are talking about uh, high caliber weapons also in civilian control today how do we begin disarming the civilian population some of these weapons have been looted from police armories this is a very dangerous situation see i have been again wherever i have been going i have been telling this i have published one or two articles also and in one of the interviews also i mentioned i have suggested a five point formula i call it as a five point approach or you may call it as a abcd approach also the first and foremost is what we have to see is the accountability firstly how could this situation go out of hand where is the accountability yes. of our police where is the accountability of our administration where is the accountability yes. of our intelligence so first we have to identify the accountability of various people who have faltered somewhere or the other including defense forces home ministry whosoever has faltered somebody has faltered and the next b is for booking these defaulters whosoever is booked an example should be made out of those nobody is indispensable if you feel somebody is faltered he should be sent home or he should be at least posted out from that region third i was saying is a collective responsibility the csos are talking of something else the the retired academicians are talking of something else the defense personnel are not there so the entire society a collective response has to come together including the politicians the all party meeting and rightly what the point you brought out d i has mentioned is for disarming this society it's a excellent recipe for disaster 
to have a society which is weaponized. You have a weaponized society. They are people are roaming around freely today, and in this youthful age, you only need power and weapon, and you are giving them both. So, and last to what I was mentioning, E stands for enroll the youth. They are the ones who will deliver. We are the ones who will be able to give some suggestions by way of experience in those areas. But it is the youth who has to see that three, four, five generations in the past have gone. This is the new generation which has seen this kind of violence. Imagine the psychological impact on the children who have seen the violence. Next 20 years, they are ruined. They have to now, yeah. this youth has to come forward on the discussion table, on the table where the opinions are to be made, where the final policies are to be made. And if you have this kind of approach, we have to have a comprehensive Northeast policy, which should not be changed at the drop of a hat with change of a government. Yeah, I, I want to recap your five point. I want to recap your five point formula A for accountability, uh, B for book those, make an example of somebody uh, who is who, who, who is violating the law, C for a collective response. There has to be some a consensus, uh, D for disarm. Uh, and E, enroll the youth in something else. They're out there with guns. Uh, General Sangwan, that is a very, very clear uh, and lucid uh, sort of model for the way forward. Uh, we say thank you to you for bringing your vast experience and sharing your thoughts. Also very sage. You did not uh, even support AFSPA. You said let's not have a tool to trigger more, more civilian protests. Very sage advice there. Uh, we thank you, sir, for talking to us. And we'll be in touch with you as we look at the situation uh, in Manipur. Thank you, General Sangwan. Pleasure talking to you, sir. Thank you and Jain to all. Thank you. Jain, sir. Thank you. It's great to see you here. Thank you for watching our work. If you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo Story and support independent, robust journalism.